Hello and welcome to CTVR 280. This week we are taking a look at uh, you know finding your next job. Uh, we're looking at the environment that you've been in uh, for about a year or two at your first entertainment job. You've learned as much as you can learn. You feel like uh, you know you've reached out to other people in the organizations and uh, both internal and external, and you're you're getting to the point where you feel like uh, you know you've gotten as much you can out of that position, and you're looking for something elsewhere. Uh, that's kind of what we're taking a look at this week in uh, week 11, chapter 17, if you're following along in the book. I am Angelo Ford, your professor. Again, I uh, do recommend uh, you check out my letterbox uh, for films that I think are great for watching when you're looking for new employment, uh, when you're looking for, you know, just like an idea about the entertainment industry. Uh, there's plenty of other lists in there as well that you can take a look at from some of my other classes. Speaking of my other classes, uh, you can look on my TikTok uh, my Instagram or my Twitter uh, for some information about there and just other classes and things with this class as well that I like to post on my professional feeds. Uh, if you do need to get a hold of me, you're always welcome to reach out to me on Canvas and of course uh, my email at Saddleback, which is aford at saddleback.edu, comes to me directly. I do check all of those emails frequently. Uh, so if you do have any questions, concerns, be sure to uh, just go ahead and shoot me a email there. This is a good time, uh, the, you know, we're talking about leveling up, you know, you're going from, uh, again, you've been at your, your first job now for, uh, let's call it uh, two years, and uh, you've learned a lot, you feel like you're starting to learn everything that you can in that position, there's really not much more that's challenging you, uh, you kind of feel like you're just doing the daily activities to get through the day, um, maybe it's time to consider leveling up. And by that, I mean looking at your talents. What have you learned uh, over the past year, two years, that can take you someplace else? Uh, what have you learned about that you might be interested in expanding those talents? Maybe, um, you know, going back and you've uh, worked with some new tools that you never used before coming to this job. And, uh, you know, you found some of them to be really exciting and interesting and you want to learn more about those. Uh, so, you know, find yourself getting that training that you need to uh, really keep elevating, keep that leveling up, and then finding where you need to go next, which is really the focus of, uh, you know, this week's lesson. Some of the principles for leveling up that we'll be looking at in the book this week, uh, going through here in our presentation, you know, get clear advice about what it is that you're looking for. That's the next thing that we're going to talk about, uh, first point here. You know, what is it that you're actually looking for? Why are you looking to, you know, move out of your position? Timing that move correctly. Uh, there's a whole bunch that goes into this that we're going to talk about, but the big thing is, is, is it the right time for you to move? Uh, be really thinking about that. Expanding your network. You should have been doing this the whole time in this position, you know, reaching out to new people, um, you know, making new contacts, all kinds of stuff. We'll dig some more into that. Asking help from trusted resources is a big part of this, uh, this week's lesson. Uh, you don't want to burn bridges. You don't want to, you know, make it seem like you're trying to jump ship. So when you do find people that you know, like, and trust, those are the people that you want to bring into this whole, uh, you know, questioning and asking um, their insight into the process. You want to stay on the radar of your existing network. Uh, for the people that do know that you are looking, you want to keep reminding them. You want to be emailing friends, looking for what's out there. Um, you definitely want to take this time to refresh your pitch log line and your personal story that we talked about in previous chapters. Uh, we'll take a look, closer look at both of those. But, you know, again, who you are, uh, what it is that you offer an organization, and that personal story that we talked about developing a few chapters ago. Uh, it's a good time to really take a look at those and, uh, you know, refresh them if necessary. Uh, of course, maintaining your current position. You don't want to lose your current job. You, know, you want to try to keep it. Uh, while you're looking for something new. And again, this comes into timing your move and just really getting a good feel for the office, how open you can be with your boss. Um, a lot of that will go into this and we'll talk more about it. And then of course, uh, I'm a big fan of SMART goals, which we'll talk more specifically about uh, in, in this chapter as well. But developing goals for yourself. What is it that you actually want next and when do you want it by and what specifically does that look like? We'll talk some more about that when we talk here about SMART goals. But basically, this is a, uh, an overview checklist for this week's chapter about leveling up uh, and about, uh, you know, leaving, uh, what's the actual chapter called? Move up the food chain. Find your next job. Uh, chapter 17 is what we're looking at here.
So the first bullet point in our checklist is to clarify what it is that you're actually looking for. And what you want to do is research specific job titles uh, and really know what you want. So do you want to be a director? Do you want to be a camera operator? Do you want to be a production assistant? Do you want to be a line producer? What do all these things mean? If you don't know by now, you really need to do some more studying uh, on the chart that I have for uh, you know all the positions that you can find on a, on within a film set, uh, within a production office. You really need to start understanding that better if you don't know that by now. The different types of producers, different types of directors, you know, and all of the other crew positions that support them. Uh, you really have a you have to have a good idea about that. And if you don't know, you know, be sure to sh shoot me an email uh, and I can provide you with some more information about those uh, different jobs and different titles as well. Uh, because at this point, you know, after you've had your first job, maybe you're working as a PA or you work uh, as a production assistant or you're working as an assistant in a production office, um, you still should have a good idea of what that hierarchy above you looks like and where you want to be in a part of it. So again, if you don't know what those specific titles are, uh, this is really the best time to really uh, hunker down and, and start to figure out what exactly it is that you're looking for. Uh, make a, um, a hit list, you know, of everybody uh, that you know that is out there doing that position and companies that might be looking for that and then start taking a look at what you can do to try to, uh, you know, get into those positions yourself. But the big thing to remember is this is a good time to really clarify you know what it is that you want to do next before you start thinking about going looking for a job outside of your current position what exactly is it that you want to do next um, and then once you have that then it is a good time to move into uh, you know when is the right time to actually leave and this is something that you should put a lot of thought into uh, meaningful tenure is the first thing to consider you know if, if somebody did hire you into a production office job as an assistant or you know a pa and you've You've only been working a few months. It might not be the time to bail ship. You know, really uh, what most people are looking at from the producer production standpoint is about a year to two years, depending on the circumstances, uh, that you'll stay in a particular position. And I know that can change with a lot of factors, uh, but it is pretty typical for at least a year. And in in if you're in an assistance office in a real studio or a small production company uh, or you're working on sets, uh, as a pre PA for a particular director, or, you know, producer, cinematographer, about a year is a is a meaningful tenure. Uh, two years, maybe, you know, if it's like a, a good sized production office. So that's really what that comes down to. Um, a promotion amnesia is another big one. You know, if you're working for a boss that has promised you a promotion and a year, two years has gone by and that promotion never materialized and you've brought it up and oh, yeah, yeah, that's coming, that's coming. And it never does. You know, that's usually a pretty good signal uh, that it's time to, to start looking for something else. And then, of course, opportunity knocks. Uh, you know, if Marvel sends you, hey, we, we got that application you sent us six months ago and, uh, you know, we'd love to have you over here. That's, you know, that's a really big thing. Now you need to look at your core organization, what kind of relationship you have with your boss. Uh, is that a realistic opportunity or is it just them fishing? You know, but if opportunity knocks, you certainly have to consider that as possibly being a, a good opportunity to leave. Hopefully it's more than a year or two years and it's an easier decision. You know, yo, I've been at my current place about two years. They're going to understand if you go take a job, you know, as a higher position uh, with a bigger company. If you do it, you know, two months after you've started there, it just does not look good. It doesn't set you up good. You really you're going to have to make some considerations about how that's going to work into things. Again, all of these go into the particular situation. Uh, we're talking about, you know, the best case scenario where you've been at a position for a year, two years, and it's been a good position, but you feel like you've learned all you can learn there and there's not much opportunity to move up and you're seeing some opportunities elsewhere. Uh, that's what we're talking about by, when, you know, when the time is right. Of course, make sure you're not in the middle of a project. You know, if you bail in the middle of a, pro a huge project that you, you're, you know, overseeing or helping on, that's terrible, you know, or then there's a lot of change going on, um, you know, so it really fits into the overall like micro and macro uh, environment of the situation that you're in that you just have to consider. But the key thing is what's right for you, finding the right time for you and then balancing that with the right time for the organization that you work with or the organization that you're looking to move to expanding your network we've talked about this in the past you always should be expanding your network you've probably expanded your network significantly at this first job 
really take the time to go through and make sure you've added all those contacts into your database and then reach out to them again. You know, ones that you might have met on a film set or met at a convention or, you know, met in your, your normal course of operations that you really just haven't reached out to. Be sure to expand your current network with those people. You know, utilize that current position to update all of your contacts and then just, uh, you know, all those nodes that are out there that re band out to more people. You really want to make sure that you're, you're utilizing that and, and staying connected. Um, you know, use uh, it, it, get together informally with your, the current people at your level, at your work. You know, um, look and see if there's things that they do. They go to lunch together on Fridays. You know, be doing all of that stuff while you're still at your current job. And then, you know, you'll get a sense of the people around you that you can talk to uh, when it comes time for, to start looking for something else. They could be a huge help in that by branching those networks out all over the place and uh, really getting a, uh, a you know, good, uh, good amount of information from those same level associates. And then, of course, you know, if you have a great level, a great relationship with your boss and your boss has been open about, um, you know, your c career path and what you want to do next. And a good boss will, by the way, a good boss will be open and sharing and talking about it. It'll never be like a threat to him or her, you know, when you say you want to leave. Uh, it should be something like they're proud of you and, and they're happy to see you moving on to something else. And they're going to fill it with somebody else that's going to, you know, take that slot for another two years. The people that are in the know in the industry and are well versed in the operations of the way things work understand this completely. So, again, if you have a good for, uh, informal you know, relationship with that boss, you, know, you can share all of this with them as well. But you want to make sure that it's the right circumstances or else you ended up burning that the current opportunity. Uh, if there aren't any informal get togethers in your current operations, in your current job, start something, start an organization, you know, start an activity club, uh, find, a, you know, people like to uh, get together after work and play and do karaoke or play Dungeons and Dragons or, your, you know, uh, whatever mountain biking club, whatever it is that you're in might be interested in and start that up in your organization so that you can meet with those people and kind of build those relationships you know, get the feeler of how they are in the organization. Can you talk to them confidently about something you might be looking for? You know, be just, again, expanding that network. And, of course, look back on the previous chapters uh, for what we talked about when it comes to, you know, different ways to expand your network as well. So that's, uh, that's always definitely something to look at, on, an ongoing thing. I mentioned about trusted resources, and this certainly applies to, you know, your current level associates, that people that you work with, that you know you, you can trust them and talk about things uh, related to work, and they're not going to go, you know, tell your boss that you're looking at leaving. Um, and again, hopefully you have a boss, you have mentors in your current position who can give you personal recommendations because they matter the absolute most. And, you know, again, in a good relationship your boss is going to be happy to give that personal recommendation and say, oh, Angelo did a great job for me as my assistant. I'm so happy to see him moving up as a uh, you know, production assistant or as a line producer moving out onto sets. Uh, I, I can always tell that he's you know, just long to be out there on the sets, and I'm, I'm all for that, and he's done a great job for me. You know, these are the kind of words you want to be getting from your boss that she's saying about you, um, you know, to other people for when it comes to recommendations. And if you have one of those type of relationships, if you, it is a good relationship, it, you, you feel like you trust them, you know, ask your mentor, your boss to ask them to go out to lunch and be honest with them that you're looking to advance. You're looking to move your career up the ladder and, you know, you've seen some opportunities out there and you'd like their input on them. Ask them for advice. And she's, you know, again, if it's a good relationship, she's going to be more than happy to provide it. She may even be able to tell you, oh, a friend of mine has, you know, an opportunity that you'd be perfect for. I didn't know you were, you know, you were looking to move. Oh, and then, then you start that conversation. You keep it going. You explain that, yeah, you know, you feel like you've learned everything you can at the current organization. You're looking for challenges. Sometimes a boss will be like, well, what if we offer you a promotion here? That's absolutely great. If it's like half, if you're in a good relationship and a, you're happy with that job, sure, taking an internal promotion can, you know, be a great way to move up. Uh, you know, so be open and honest if it's a, something that you feel that you can trust a mentor. Um, and then, of course, ask for references uh, if it is something that does work. Again, I kind of joke here saying use your spidey senses, but it's true. You know, your, your internal gut feeling about your boss by listening to her. You know, her tone, the way she answers you, the way she tells you about opportunities when they come up, 
or she doesn't tell you about opportunities come up, the things your boss doesn't say can, uh, you know, tingle your spidey senses just as much as the thing that things that uh, he or she does say. Um, ask about previous assistance. You know, when you when you are having a meeting with your boss or you go out to lunch or something, you know, that when you're talking to your boss kind of like in a relaxed manner. So what, what you know, what did what happened to the previous assistant that was here? Where did they go? What did they move on to? You can tell a lot by the answer from that question. Oh, she was great. You know, she was here for a year and a half and then she found a job over at Disney and I was more than glad to give her a reference. She was so wonderful. Or, oh, you know, that bastard took off out of here. First chance he got, you know, you can tell a lot from the way that a boss answers the question about how what happened to a previous assistant. So really take notes on that and listen. Observe her interactions, the way she acts around other people of your level. How does she treat other associates? How does she talk to them? You know, does she tell them about opportunities that are you know, that she might know of? Or does she kind of guide things for herself? You can tell a lot by observing people's behavior. Um, and then, uh, not, you know, office politics. Again, you want to stay out of the office politics, but that doesn't mean that you can't, like, listen and observe to how they go on. How does your boss, uh, you know, relate to those office politics? What does she say uh, about things, rumors around the office? Or, you know, does she uh, engage in that type of stuff? Or does she kind of keep out of it? You know, um, the office politics could be, a, again, a big indicator into your overall understanding of uh, the trusted environment that you do or do not have. Um, I talked earlier about uh, one of the bullet points was staying on the radar. And this, by staying on the radar, I love this little illustration. It's really meant for products, but it's really excellent for you as a product in an organization. Uh, you really want to capture the share of mind and the share of heart of the people in your organization, of the people who might be interested in hiring you, uh, everybody in your network, basically. And I lo again, I love this little uh, diagram that goes basically from a simple awareness in somebody's mind to having knowledge of them to having a, 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 some kind of uh, idea, attitude towards it of you. Uh, here they've got trial of a product, but this might be you've gone out to a lunch with somebody. Uh, you know, they've, they've given you a trial into their world. Maybe they went out and played basketball with you or you, they invited you to your Dungeons and Dragons, a Dungeons and Dragons meet one time or a couple times. But they've, in, they've invited you into their world as a trial. The next one, they have a stronger attitude for you. Oh, I really liked Angelo. He had a, we had a great time over at my Dungeons & Dragons game. Or, uh, you know, we had a great time riding mountain bikes together. He helped me fix my, my flat tire. I would definitely have him again. You know, and, and he or she wants to then participate in your world with you, which is that repeat purchase. They're going to ask you back out to go mountain bike riding out, or back out to a lunch. You know, next Friday, they invite you again to the Friday lunch with the other associates, which is comes down into the... Uh, the repeating the purchase again. One is on, they just do it because they like you. And then it, it moves towards the share of heart where they actually have space for an emotional, um, you know, connection with you. They really like having you as a part of the group. You're bringing something that the rest of the group doesn't have. So it's no longer just the share of their mind where they're thinking about bringing you in. It's actually now you're a share of heart and you're, you're one of the first choices. Now, when it's, oh, I'm going to go mountain bike riding, who do I want to go this weekend? You are the first person they think of before they think of the rest of the associates uh, that they're going to send an email out to you, to the point where they're becoming your advocate, which is, again, giving that personal recommendation on, on your behalf. Uh, you know, another friend is thinking about starting another group, and they say, oh, you definitely have to give Angelo a call. He's really fun about starting groups, you know. And then now you've totally captured that share of heart where people are emotionally advocating on your behalf. And there's nothing more, you know, that better than doing that to stay on their radar and maintaining a share of their mind and a share of their heart when it comes to uh, different kinds of things that they might be having you involved in. Um, we talked about keeping up your log line. You know, again, this I stole this slide from our previous uh, thing. Make sure that you are you have that log line that says how you're different what it is that you do or want to do, and then what are you currently doing? Take another look back at this chapter, this slide. Uh, make sure you have a good one-line sentence that explains who you are and what you like to do and why others should you know, want you to be participating in their activities. Uh, that's a big part of you know, uh, building that personal log line.
which should feed into, you know, people want to know more about you. You, t- you say that log line to somebody at a party. The next thing, you know, a little while later, they come up and they, hey, tell me about that time in the Air Force. Or, you know, oh, what were you saying about that? You know, you and your son both, you like this picture here, you and your son both played with uh, TIE fighters. What was that story I, I overheard you so and so and so about? You know, you're building that, that log line into a personal A story timeline um, of who you are, where you grew up, how you came to be who you are. And really, uh, you know, look back on this chapter if you don't remember uh, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about building an A story uh, that you can be pitching to other people because it's a big part of uh, expanding your network. You don't want to be careless. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Uh, you really want to be careful about protecting your current position. Uh, you, If you have a type of boss that's very, uh, um, you know, isn't... Uh, if you have the type of boss that, you know, isn't very interested in seeing you progress your career, I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, you know, you might not want to share with them the fact that you're looking elsewhere. Uh, if your type of office is the type that is really chatty, you know, and, and word gets around and people, you know, make things bigger than they are. You don't want to share that in your, in your current levels. Uh, but if you have a boss issue, if your boss isn't OK with you looking for an job, you have to be super vigilant. You know, make sure that you're. Uh, you're taking the time to do that on do your full day's work, do your the work your way you're supposed to not use company resources, you know, for any of your searching. Then when you get home, take the time to look for jobs at night, apply for jobs and uh, really be smart about the way that you're doing it off company time and not sharing that with others. If you have a boss, that's great. It's a total opposite. You know, share with the boss. I've literally worked with bosses that have told me. Yeah, go ahead, print out resumes here, you know, feel free to take some time during the day if you want to, you know, if you've got nothing going on in the afternoon, send some emails on on some jobs you're looking for. If you have that close kind of relationship, open relationship, good relationship with your boss, absolutely, that's a different story. I'm talking about a a boss maybe that you don't have that relationship with. Uh, And if, again, you have to be strategic about the use of your time. You know, if you're using sick time or days off to go do interviews, Obviously, you only have so many of those days per year, and if you're wasting them on opportunities that don't like like they're going to go anywhere, it's not a good use of your time. You know, try to utilize weekends and nights as much as possible, and then utilize those days off for when it looks like an opportunity that you know could really turn into something. Uh, save that time and be careful of it. Again, unless you have a boss who's totally cool with you taking a day off, you know that's a totally different story. It's the best scenario. Oh, Angelo, you've got a. I heard you. I heard from so and so that you have an interview on Friday with uh, Disney. You know, don't take the day off. You can, you know, feel free to take the afternoon off. Uh, just come in a little bit early, and you know, uh, you can make up the hours next week. So just be strategic and smart about it. Don't just like make assumptions. And then, of course, don't badmouth. Completely resist the temptation to badmouth your boss or your workplace. On social media, in real life, just don't do it, you know. It's one thing if you're in your apartment with your friends and you're talking about something about having left a bad work environment versus going online and just airing dirty laundry. All of this stuff comes back around. The entertainment world in particular is such a small world. Everything amazingly will come back to haunt you. So don't badmouth anybody on any social media or, or just out there in the world. It's, it's not going to do you any good. And uh, the big thing here with all of this slide is to just be careful. Don't be careless. Protect your current position because you have to keep that position until you find something else. So it can be a tricky transition, but if, you, if you're careful, uh, you, can do, you can do it right. Speaking of doing it right, smart goals. You absolutely need goals in life. Uh, they're one of, to me, one of the key factors that differentiates people that succeed versus people that don't succeed me one of the biggest things is having a goal because then you can focus on that goal if you don't have a goal who knows what to focus on you're just getting lucky if something happens to you my days in uh, corporate america you know all the companies that i've worked at we've always talked about smart goals which i do really like i think of all the crazy zany ideas that come out of the business world smart goals are a good one and you really want to take the time to develop them and by smart i mean that they're specific they're measurable they're attainable they're realistic, and they're timely. You can see on this little chart a little bit more about what that means when we're talking about specific. We're talking about answering the who, the what, the where, the when, all of those like third grade questions uh, to give you a very specific goal. Uh, I want to find a job by September. Eh, It's okay, 
I want to find a job in production management by the end of September 2022. That's a much more specific goal. Um, again, and it's almost it, it starts to get into the measurable as well. There's an ability to track the process because if you don't have the ability to track the process on a goal, to me, it's not a very good goal because uh, for something to change, it has to be measured. And if you can't measure it, then it's again, it's just not a very uh, trackable goal. Uh, so make sure that you do have some kind of tracking milestone process in there. Uh, attainable, you know, determine if it's just a goal. Is it a, some, a realistic goal or is it just a dream? You know, me being president of the United States is, uh, I mean, it, it, it's not really a, an attainable goal, you know, um, in, in my current state. Maybe the president of my local homeowners association. Uh, but you really, it's a difficult thing. And, and this one's a bit hard. These two, um, attainable, and they say relevant, but I like realistic. I mean, you could swap out those words easily. Uh, but these two are a bit difficult. How do you define this in film, uh, in, in, in our entertainment world in particular? Because most of what we do is a pipe dream to the rest of the world. Uh, so you really have to figure out on, you know, soul searching on your own between uh, attainable, relevant, and realistic. I do like the word relevant here. I think better than realistic. You know, is it relevant to your time in your life is a, is a good one to look at and think about. And then the last one is timely or time bound. You know, it needs to have some kind of timeline. I like timely better here uh, because timely is, is, is it timely to what's going on in the environment today? I like to look at it that way. Uh, you know, is this a, a goal that makes sense uh, in what's going on in today's timeline? Um, so th that's what I, I like to look at when I'm thinking about smart goals. You can look at these and do some more research on your own. But to me, the big takeaway from it is, is that you're making goals that are specific and that have some kind of measurable ability to them. And, and the, there's a timeline that makes sense um, should, is what the key takeaway from that one is. For this week's exercise, it's uh, chapter 17. We're looking at page 192. There's, again, two things like usual. There's create a hit list. Uh, which is make up name, look for the names of companies that you're interested in, look for some positions within that company that you think are really good fit for you, and then try to find some people that either already have that position in the company or elsewhere that you can ask questions about that position. And then the second uh, task is to create a creative spin story. Uh, you know, for maybe a, maybe you worked at a place that was really terrible to work at, you had a really bad, terrible professor in one of your classes, you know, what are a couple different stories that you would come up with that are truthful stories, but tell it in the best light possible without bringing up, you know, bad mouthing the company or the professor for that type of thing. So that's this week's two uh, chapter ex uh, 17 exercises. If you want to uh, try those on your own, go ahead and give those a uh, shot. That is all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's lecture um, on... Moving up the food chain, finding your next position after this uh, first entry level job into entertainment. Uh, be sure to check out Canvas for any of the applicable information on there. And uh, I hope you have a great week. Thanks again.